Good morning and welcome to our worship this morning. It's lovely that we can come and worship the Lord together. And a special welcome to those who are joining us online today. You're very welcome as we connect together in worship, wherever you may be, in Dersingham, Anmer, Inglesorp, Shermbourne, or further afield. It's lovely that you can be part of the worship today as well. My name is Reverend Mark Capron, the rector here. And today, I'm also going to uh, step in and preach today. Uh, sadly, Dave is unwell. He's got uh, quite a bad sick bug. So please do pray for Dave and the, the family as they recover over the coming days. Uh, just a few little notices just to say thank you to all those who were involved in the harvest service last week and also those who were involved in preparing the church, uh, making it look wonderful, uh, and also the gifts. They've now gone over to um, the food bank, uh, the Women's Refuge, and also some for Baby Basics as well. So thank you for the generosity for those in many different ways. It's also lovely to see so many people here for the worship as well. We have our combined service. Next Sunday, uh, we're going to have a focus on climate uh, and our responsibility and stewardship of God's earth and world. And so there will be a unique service both at 9.30 and at 11 o'clock with a focus on that. So just a heads up on that. So we look forward to, to doing that. I must admit, I've been looking forward to preaching on that for quite a while. So that will be good, hopefully. <laughs> Uh, again, also just want to say thank you to all those who were involved in the Absale Day last weekend, uh, even though the weather was uh, dubious in some shape or form. Uh, it was a wonderful day for the community. People from around the area and different parts of the community took part. So thank you very much for those who helped, did the stores, behind the scenes, uh, as well as those who, who braved the ropes as well. Uh, one little bit of information is... Um, on my left-hand side, we have a lovely stained glass window, and we have an image that's been taken of that to provide Christmas cards. So if people would like to buy Christmas cards, it will be focused on this window here, the Nativity. Um, they are now on order, and so if you would like to place an order yourself of some, uh, Mary Sharp will be the contact. There is a little poster up on the back and also near the welcome as you came in uh, if you wanted Mary's number, and she will take the orders, and then they'll be available for you to either send abroad or send uh, to local people a bit near the time. Just to confirm with regards to the distribution of communion, it is communion of one kind only, um, and during the preparation and also distribution, I will wear a face mask during that. I will uh, celebrate up in the sanctuary, I will then distribute to the choir and the choir the organist, and then I shall come down here and then invite you to come and receive. There is hand sanitizer here, here, and here. I feel like I'm on an airplane doing the, uh, the, the usual bits. Uh, but yes, do make use of the hand sanitizer, and also, if you're able, uh, it'd be helpful just to wear a face mask as you come down as we're closer to people and moving around. So that is with regards to face masks and also hand sanitizer. I think that is it with regards to the, the notices. Um, so we're going to turn to our first hymn. So if we turn to our red hymn books, I invite you to stand as we sing our first hymn, which is number 160. That's 160. 160. We love the place, O oh God. Please do stand as we sing. <laughs>
now turn to our orders of service. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Please to be seated as we turn to the prayer of preparation. And we say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts. <coughs> Perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. We just pause for a moment to personally reflect. So the second prayer on the top of page five. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We now come to the glory which we sing. So I invite you to stand if you're willing and able as we sing the glory. Collects a special prayer. <coughs> Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us thy gift of faith, that forsaking that which is behind and reaching out to what which is before, we may run the way of thy commandments and win the crown of everlasting joy. 
Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated as we have our first reading. The first reading is taken from Hebrews chapter 4, verses 12 to 16. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Therefore, since we have a high priest who has gone through the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are yet was without sin. Let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. This is the word of the Lord. Turn to our hymn books again for our second hymn as we continue in our worship. It's number 143, 143, Jesus shall reign where'er the sun. Please do stand if you're willing and able. Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Chapter 7, verses 24 to 30. Jesus left that place and went to the vicinity of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know it, yet he could not keep his presence secret. In fact, as soon as she heard about him, a woman, whose little daughter was possessed by an evil spirit, came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek, born in Syria, Phoenicia. She begged Jesus to drive the demon out of her daughter. First, let the children eat all they want, he told her, for it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to their dogs. 
Yes, Lord, she replied, but even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he told her, for such reply you may go. The demon has left your daughter. She went home and found her child lying on the bed and the demon gone. This is the Gospel of the Lord. the meditations of our hearts be pleasing in your sight O Lord our rock and redeemer Amen. Amen Please be seated This last week I uh, enjoyed watching a Labrador being taken for its walk and it got to the water and its owners threw a, threw a tennis ball in, and yes, the dog had a wonderful time jumping in, getting the ball, bringing it back, and then it was thrown back in, and it went on for quite a while. Uh, I managed to move out of the way, just so I didn't get drenched, uh, as the owner said, you might just want to move away, and I said, well, I've got experience of, uh, of a dog beforehand, uh, and I moved out of the way, and then just on cue, as the dog got out that, that time, it then completely shook, all the water onto its owners, and everyone had a good laugh. But the reason why I talk about dogs is that a lot of people are very fond of dogs, whether or not they have one of their own. And I know over the preceding months, a number of our worshipping community households have acquired a puppy. And with puppy comes a bundle of fun, um, but also the training that is required, but is that soft bundle of fun that they are. Dogs have worked their way into the hearts of many, and also into the vocabulary as well, and the phrasing that is used. There is going for dogs, some people like going for dogs to watch the greyhound racing. Some, sometimes if the phrase is, uh, gone to the dogs, things going from bad to worse. <laughs> or, I'm sure it's not applied to anyone here, especially the gentleman, uh, being in the dog house. <laughs> More of a laugh behind me than ahead of me. So I'll say maybe it applies more this way, possibly. Anyway, moving swiftly on, Mark, before I get myself in trouble. <laughs> in our culture, dogs are seen as a delightful addition to a household. But in biblical times, things will be rather different. Referring to someone as a dog was a derogatory term. And here in the Bible, we hear that Jesus is potentially being the harshest in his ministry. Why would a man of love, God's son, refer to someone as a dog? Let's dig a little deeper and see what Jesus is aiming at. That's frequently the case, and as I mentioned and many a time, and my colleagues do as well. In order to get a bit of an understanding, we need to get more of a context, looking around the passage that we have today. It's what comes before at the passage today that is important. At the beginning of chapter 7, the Pharisees and some of the teachers of the law who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus. They saw some of his disciples eating food and with hands that were defiled, that made unwashed. This was an issue in the eyes of the Pharisees, as the Jews did not eat unless they gave their hands a ceremonial washing. And do feel free, if you've got a Bible app on your phone, as ever, do feel free to bring that up to follow the passage. The Pharisees, in one of their many attempts, seek an opportunity to put Jesus right. And for them, ceremonial cleaning is important. As the passage continues, Jesus signposts them to the fact that it's not what goes in. Verse 19. For it doesn't go into their hearts, but into their stomach then out of their body. And in brackets, the Bible says, in saying this, Jesus declared all foods clean. Here is Jesus in a Gentile area, wiping out the difference between clean and unclean foods. And now he's about to, in symbolism, wipe out the difference between
been perceived clean and unclean people in our passage. Some of you may be aware of Cornelius. Acts chapter 10. There, and Peter, and there's that example where, up on the roof, Peter's vision, he saw heaven opened and something like a large sheet ring let down to earth by its four corners. It contained all kinds of animals, four-footed animals as well as reptiles and birds. And then a voice we hear from Act 10 says, get up, Peter, kill and eat. Surely not, Lord, Peter replied. I have never eaten anything impure or unclean. The voice spoke to him a second time. Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. So back to our reading today. Jesus is in a Gentile country. He wants some space to spend some time with the twelve. Something he's wanted to do since chapter 6, verse 30. Where just before the feeding of 5,000, he says, come and get some rest. Come and, come and get something to, something to eat with me. Because it'll be a bit busy. He's visited by a Greek woman from further north. She's obviously heard of Jesus and knows where to find him. And she comes begging for her demonized daughter's healing. Jesus tells a brief parable about boundaries. The meal sign boundary between the family and the animals. Verse 27. As she completes the parable, the animals get the leftovers. And Jesus hears that response. Now, growing up, in my family household, as I was a, 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 growing up as a child, we had a golden Labrador. And honey was soft. And we had lots of fun, my, myself and my brothers. We loved her, she loved us. And at meal times, if me and my brothers weren't so keen on the meal, when our parents weren't watching, we would just go knock some scraps off onto the floor. I don't think my parents ever spotted me. They may have, they might have just kept quiet. Uh, who knows? Anyway. But Honey the dog had the scraps from the children. In the Bible, Jesus responds to the woman by saying that let the children be fed first. For it's not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. answered him, Sir, verse 28, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Those two verses are important in this encounter, a message for us. It's not just her faith that Jesus commends, but her word. She got what the disciples don't seem to have grasped boundary between God's reign and everywhere else is accessible and all sorts of people can come in, including this Greek woman. She did, of course, have faith. She had faith. It was faith that sent her on the journey to seek Jesus out and faith that kept her going on the journey back to see whether Jesus' word was true and her daughter had been healed. That faith was not disappointed. Verse 30. So having broken down the boundaries in private, Jesus now very publicly opens the floodgates and shares the blessings of God's kingdom with the Gentiles. Jesus says, let the children be first, referring to the Jews. To be fed and do not let the dogs receive what is the children's. The dog represents the Gentiles. And we must remember that at the face of it, as we've explored, it looks like Jesus is being rather harsh and potentially insulting, but he isn't. In his smile, no doubt, that Jesus has, and possibly maybe with a glint in his eye, this is probably one of the times when I would love to see the facial expressions on Jesus' face as he spoke. He says to this woman, providing an opportunity woman to respond in faith to this parable. The woman acknowledges what Jesus is saying and 
responds within the parable. In short, she gets it. The dogs were sharing the children's bread, but soon they would cease to be dogs and be children alongside the others. As in Jesus, all are welcome. This is encouragement that even if we feel detached from the world, for whatever reason that may be, Jesus' invitation to love and follow him is open to all. Not restricted by certain <laughs> groups, cultures, or countries. So Jesus, through the healing of the woman's daughter, is not about being a medical, a miracle medical missionary, that's a bit tricky to say, <laughs> rather the rescue through God's kingdom. So Jesus says to the woman and to us, regardless of your perceived positions, you are welcome. Regardless of who you are in society or not. You are welcome. Regardless of where you may have been born, you are welcome. Regardless of which family you were born into, Jesus says, you are welcome. So a Phoenician woman is not a dog, rather a child of God. That's what we are. A child of God. And he welcomes you into relationship through the Lord Jesus Christ. That is a wonderful message to grasp and to delight in this week and beyond. But also, God provides us with those divine opportunities those encounters to so please in your prayer journey, your prayer life, your rhythm of prayer. Do you pray that when the Lord provides these opportunities to speak about your faith, be prepared to be able to encourage and welcome all those that he welcomes. May we not be a barrier, may we be an encouragement to others <coughs> to journey and to know Jesus in our lives. May I pray. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, we thank you for the Syrian Phoenician woman. We thank you for her faith, but also the words that she shared. May we take example from her. May we be wise in the words that we share words that we don't, and also careful in the actions that we portray. May they speak well of you, and when you provide the divine opportunities and meetings with other people, help us to speak well of you, and remember that all are welcome to know God. to the creed, our statement of faith and belief. So I encourage you, if you're able and willing, please do stand. And we join together as we say, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, 
eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And we now have a time of intercession. Please do be seated. Let us pray to God the Father in the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of goodness, inspire us not to long so much for personal wealth, but more for your eternal presence. <laughs> Help us to trust in your grace and mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear Amen. our prayer. And we thank you, Lord, for the abundant welcome you give us. Thank you, Lord. Amen. We thank you, gracious God, for the beautiful world you have given us. May we preserve and guard our environment and its biodiversity. <coughs> we pray for trouble spots in the world thinking especially of the Lebanon where power cuts have added to all their other troubles. And in Britain we pray for our schools, especially secondary schools where there are worries about growing infection rates. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, may your church be a beacon of light and hope in the world. May we, your church, find joy and fulfillment in helping others, whether in good times or in difficult times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of goodness, your love sees our strength and our weakness. Look in mercy on those whose hearts are faint. Strengthen and uphold them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who are suffering or ill, we kneel alongside them, crying out to you for their comfort and healing. For you are no bringer of evil to our lives, but share our sorrow and give us the grace to bear it. Lord, in your mercy, hear Amen. our prayer. God of goodness, as death takes from us those we love, and as we find it hard to live without them, take from us all bitterness of heart and let us know your peace, just as those we have lost know your peace in your eternal presence.
Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. <coughs> Come to our next hymn normally would have been uh, an offertory hymn, but uh, the plate is at the back of the church, so do at the end of the service, please do place your offerings at the back in the dish, and also it is contactless as well, so do feel free to tap away with your mobile phone or your card. So we continue with our worship, it's number 394, 394, the Lord of all hopefulness, the Lord of all joy. Please do stand if you're willing and able. Continue in our worship on page nine. That's page nine in our orders of service. <coughs> Blessed to you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It has become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. And we continue on the same page with the Eucharistic prayer, G. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, Lord God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. From the beginning you have created all things, and your works echo the silent music of your praise. In the fullness of time you have made us in your image, the crown of all creation. You give us breath and speech, that with angels and archangels and all the powers of heaven, we may find a voice to sing your praise.
How wonderful the work of your hands, O Lord, as a mother tenderly gathers her children. You embraced a people as your own. When they turned away and rebelled, your love remained steadfast. From them you raised up Jesus, our Saviour, born of Mary, to be the living bread, in whom all hunger, hungers are satisfied. He offered his life for sinners, and with a love stronger than death, he opened wide his arms upon the cross. On the night before he died, he came to supper with his friends, taking bread. He gave you thanks. He broke it. And gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. We remember his dying and rising in glory, and we rejoice that he intercedes for us at your right hand. Pour out your Holy Spirit as we bring before you these gifts of your creation. May they be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy things in your presence, form us in the likeness of Christ and build us into a living temple to your glory. Bring us at the last with all the saints to the vision of that eternal splendour for which you have created us, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, with whom, and in whom, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Page 14. That's page 14. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Page 15. God's holy gifts for God's people. 
Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. The glory of God the Father. And the first prayer we say together, <coughs> we do not presume to come to your table, merciful Lord, trusting in your own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen.
And so we turn to the bottom of page 16, the bottom of page 16, and we say the prayer after communion together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. So I invite us to stand for the blessing and final hymn. Peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. In the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. As we come to our final hymn, uh, during which we will omit the star verses, that's omit the star verses, it's number 148, 148, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.